Welcome back everyone. During the break, we grabbed some of your latest questions about the COVID-19 pandemic. We are continuing our live conversation now with Governor Chris Sununu. So Governor Bob asks, does the state have enough testing supplies to support current and future demands. I hear stories that there's not enough materials to do the testing needed. So over the past week and a half, we've really been able to build up our testing supplies, which is a huge variable in allowing us to make some of these initial steps out of the gate a little bit. Uh, testing is a huge part of it. So even today, we were doing a 250, 300 tests about two weeks ago. We did over 1,200 tests yesterday, and we expect that we can get up to almost 1,500 in the coming days. So we've really built up a good cache of testing of supplies. We're getting them out to exactly where they need to be and that helps us to make these steps. Our next question coming in says when will churches be allowed to have services again? You know churches are really difficult because of the close contact of individuals and simply because a lot of churches they, they've told us they're not ready because they don't want to turn parishioners away because you know they're making everyone sit six feet apart. What if the church is already full? Are you really going to turn people away at the door of a place of worship? And that's a very tough situation to be in. So unfortunately we're not there. Some of the earliest cases of COVID in New Hampshire were passed from person to person and in, in churches, and so we have to be very careful about that. Um, and again, we'll keep working with the churches and the diocese and all those, those organizations and get their guidance and their feedback to make sure that we're going, whatever we do f moving forward, we're doing it hand in hand. Jess wants to know when can non-emergency child care centers reopen and return to their licensed capacity? So uh, most of the child care centers across the state are privately run and, and we've allowed them to stay open. Um, a lot of them have chosen to close on their own because of workforce issues or whatever it might be. But knowing that we need a lot of folks in the workforce, the nurses and the doctors and all of this, uh, we've really tried to encourage them to stay open and we even provide some even financial incentive for some of them that, that were a little bit on the shorter end and, and, and more in financial trouble, a stipend for some of those workers and that's allowed for some of them to stay open. So uh, if they're privately run, they should be able to operate. All right, Emily wants to know, will restaurants opening on May 18th for outdoor seating be able to serve alcohol? It's amazing how often this question came up. Uh, the answer is yes. We've, we're, we've worked with the Liquor Commission. They're going to provide a lot of flexibility to the various uh, uh, venues that are going to uh, do outdoor seating, maybe sometimes for the first time. So the Liquor Commission will work with all those uh, restaurants one on one, but they've been instructed and uh, they're very aggressive about wanting to provide that flexibility for customers. Here's another question coming in from Alan about restaurants saying if the numbers continue to look good during the month of May, do you see the possibility of adding dine in restaurants to open even on a limited capacity. Absolutely. I mean, we, we will look at the data hour to hour, day to day, and if the data keeps looking good, uh, we kind of we, we've kind of hit a first gate. You want about 14 days of positive data before you take a step, which is what we're, we're, we've done. We want to see another 10 to 14 days of good data, and if we can stay on that path, we can take another step forward, and that very well could be uh, looking at some additional seating within a restaurant, maybe at, at a, a fraction of the, the uh, you know, current capacity that might be there to ensure physical distancing. Make sure that the uh, face covering requirements that we've put out there are actually working for the employees as well. We want to keep everybody safe who might interact with, uh, with those venues. Okay, we're getting a lot of camping questions. This one coming in, would a seasonal camper who pays for the season be considered a member even if they reside in another state? Yes, yeah, uh, seasonal campers are, are, are effectively members and that's exactly what we wanted to, to protect as New Hampshire residents and members for both camp, uh, campgrounds and golf. It actually works in a very similar way uh, are allowed to, to be in those facilities. But what we're really trying to avoid is that transient weekend person that just comes up on the weekend and goes back to Boston, comes up on the weekend. That, that's a recipe for, for trouble given the uh, high in incidence of COVID uh, just south of the border. So if those folks are, are there for the season, they can be there for the season. All right. So much to go over for stay at home 2.0. Governor, thank you for your time. Anytime. Thank you.